everyone, welcome back to another video where I obsess over something you've probably never heard of. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I love shoujo. Not just maho shoujo, but stereotypically girly things in general. So, knowing that, imagine how excited I would be if the company behind Precure, Sailor Moon, and Ojimajo Doremi made a shoujo anime that features royalty, dancing, beautiful dresses, romance, found family, friendship, betrayal, and a story that stays consistently beautiful from beginning to end. I'm happy to say that anime does indeed exist, and it's 2003's Ashita no Naja. Ashita no Naja, or Tomorrow's Naja, is a historical drama similar to classic shoujo like Candy Candy. It's about a cheery blonde orphan named Naja, voiced by Ami Koshimizu, aka Cure Melody, <laughs> aka Sailor Jupiter, who receives a mysterious gift on her 13th birthday. It's a suitcase containing a beautiful pink dress, a diary written by her mother when she was the same age, and a letter. This seems crazy to Nadja, because she thought her parents were dead. Miss Applefield informs Nadja that her mother is still alive, and now she's on a journey to find her. During a trip into town, she and the other orphans watch some traveling performers. It's there that she's noticed by Hitman! Ow. <laughs> I popped my arm! Ow! <laughs> it's there that she's noticed by Hitman! hired to take her brooch, which also once belonged to her mother. Take a guess as to how they execute this plan. Do they just take it from her because she's a skinny little child with no visible strength? No, too easy. Do they steal it while she tries on her mother's dress? No, that would be too smart. No, these dunderheads sneak into the orphanage, wake up the wrong kid, and start a fire? Burning the home of all these kids to the ground. What? This mishap does create the perfect distraction to gang up on a distressed Naja. And the hitmen almost get the brooch. But then a prince on a horse shows up out of nowhere and beats the bad guys up. The mystery teen then returns the brooch to Naja, calms her down, wipes her tears away. Lord oh, have mercy! I am too touched star for this! I apologize. Naja is fascinated by the stranger, but passes out due to the stress of the situation. The young man gives a sleeping Naja to the grandma from the traveling circus group from earlier, and the episode ends. From here, Naja becomes a professional dancer with some of the coolest costumes. I would kill for her ballet outfit. It's, it's so perfect. perfect. It's through her travels with the dandelion troupe that she slowly becomes closer to finding her mother, all the while she makes her own family with the people around her as she travels through Europe. The show very much feels like an anime soap opera, with episodes connecting together and dramatic reveals happening every so often to give the story some spice. spice. Ashita no Naja is wonderful at making Naja's version of the early 20th century feel real. Characters Naja runs into come back around and have their own adventures off screen, some of which later affect Naja directly. It's insane how wonderfully planned the story was. Not a single episode or character feels useless. Everyone has a purpose. Even the characters you'd think would be one note. Our title character is Naja. As I've already explained, she's an orphan turned dancer who is looking for her biological mother. She's cheery, kind, and a delight to most. She travels with the dandelion troupe, 
consisting of George, the strong, free-spirited leader and the father figure for the younger members, Granny, a little old Russian lady who has incredible fashion skills, making most of Nadja's outfits, Sylvie, a beautiful singer who acts as an older sister to Nadja, Abel, the German comedian with one of the most tragic backstories, gotta, gotta laugh, laugh through the, the pain, pain I, guess. I guess, Thomas, an Irish musician who tends to be gentle and quiet, unless Abel and Sylvie give him alcohol. Yes, there is alcohol in this show. It's Europe. What did you expect? Kanosuke, who is a half-Japanese orphan who dreams of being an inventor, and has a slight crush on Nadja. And lastly is Rita, the absolute sweetest little girl who tames two lions named Cream and Chocolate. However, due to her trauma I won't tell you about, she's mute. Yeah, everyone in the show has something going on internally, and Nadja's the ray of sunshine that inspires them to look towards tomorrow. Hence the name, Tomorrow's Nadja. Very clever. Honestly, the show could have just been about their adventures, and I would have been fine. But the people Nadja meets along the way really make Nadja go from a good show to a great one. With the series taking place in early 20th century Europe, there are a lot of royals. The most notable being Francis. Francis Harcourt is the son of a wealthy English nobleman. Unlike most of his stuck-up family, he's a big believer in charity and sees no benefits from social classes. He officially meets Nadja at the charity ball, and the two bond immediately. This blooming love story is halted by the introduction of Tuxedo Mask. <clears throat> I mean, Cat Noir! <clears throat> I mean, the Black Rose. He's a Robin Hood type character who has the same charitable values as Francis, but he's more... Illegal, illegal about, about it. The Black Rose is the embodiment of Eat the Rich. I, I love, love him. <laughs> but Hope, you might be asking, isn't it oddly suspicious that these two charitable guys are blonde and fond of Nadja? Are they connected somehow, or... <gasps> the same person? I'm not telling you. Watch the show, that's, that's the, the point, point of this, this video. video! Anyway, the Black Rose is super cool, and the love triangle is surprisingly not cringy. That's a very hard thing to get right, but Nadja did. Good job, writers! Most of the characters on the royal side of things involve major spoilers, so I'm not talking about most of those. But it would be a crime if I didn't talk about the one character I love to hate! Spoilers in 5, 4, 3, 2... Rosemary is a childhood friend of Nadja, who also lived in the Applefield Orphanage. She ends up working as a maid, but when she and Nadja reconnect, she becomes extremely jealous of Nadja's biological mother being royalty. So this wicked little girl gets a job as a lady-in-waiting and impersonates Nadja with the intent of becoming a real princess. It is terrifying how far this girl goes just to keep Nadja away from her biological mother. All the while, Nadja deeply cares for Rosemary because they grew up together. I, you. I will ruin your life. There's one scene in particular that still makes me tense up.
This little girl is a demon! And they just let her get away at the end? Not just too kind, I say death penalty. Rosemary is infuriating, but wonderfully written. The characters in the show in general are great, but I think you understand that by now. Let's move on to the art. Does Nadja look like it's from 2003? I don't think so. A good portion of anime from this time have a very distinct look, usually having absurdly large eyes. You know no. the ones. I love that style, but now it looks very dated. Nadja looks timeless, and has some gorgeous scenes that still hold up. This is one of Toei's better looking shows, even with the occasionally out of place CG. Toei could give Nadja an HD remaster and re-air it for modern audiences, and I think those who don't already know about the show would think it's more modern looking than it actually is. Nadja is 20 years old, which isn't really old, or at least I hope it isn't because that's how old I am, but some shows from the early 2000s haven't aged nearly as gracefully, so good job toy animators! Welcome to the unboxing portion of the video. I've done a couple of these before, but this will be my smallest one I've done yet because I only have three items, but I still thought they were cute and worth showcasing because I don't see a lot of Nadja merch roaming around on the internet. So yeah, this is what I have. First, I should talk about my minifigure that has, oh, whatever his name is, the bland one. The nice one. He's not bland, he's nice. He's just not as spicy <laughs> as the other one. I think the other one's name is Keith. That one I don't remember. Anyways, it has him and Nadja in her pink dress, which is my favorite. I'm basic. I love pink. I'm sorry. My only problem with this figure is that the seller forgot to give me the bow. So Nadja just has a big hole in the back of her head. Makes me sad. It was included in the picture, but for whatever reason, I didn't get it and now this thing is falling apart. You need to keep this thing down. You cannot hold it because the stand falls apart. I don't know if that's because of age or if this just wasn't made that well. It was part of those like, the machines. The gotcha machines, I believe that's what they're called. There was like a whole minifigure set. This is the only one I have. I was gonna get a bundle, but I didn't think it was worth it. Next we have this Nadja educational activity book. Now the seller said it had been used. However, the stickers are still fully intact, which I think is super cool. I'm not gonna use it, that would be a sin. But yeah, they're still in here. Just chilling out. And my dog is here. Hold on. Hopefully there will be no more interruptions. Anyways, as I was saying, this is a little educational activity book filled with stickers. And I think it's supposed to teach hiragana. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I've only used a few Duolingo lessons <laughs> and Google Translate. <laughs> And there's lots of different little places where you can put the different stickers that match whatever word you need. <laughs> you know, like normal educational activity books for this age group, which I believe is three to five. It says three, four, five, so I'm going with that. But yeah, these pages are super, super cute, and I'm happy to have this in my collection. 
I think I got it for maybe $15. It was super cheap. Now, this last item is very interesting because I bought it from a seller, I believe, in Taiwan. And the packaging is kind of crusty. So we're taking it out. It looks like it's been opened before anyway. So yeah, sorry collectors. Now before, I either wanted to order the bigger baton or the umbrella, but frankly that's not in my budget right now. Tuition comes first, bestie, sorry. But I do have this. And that plastic is cracked anyway, so we're just gonna carefully cut into this. And, oh, that's like already unstuck. Oh, 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 okay. There's like one that might be on here that I can cut off. Like one that's maybe stuck on here. Yeah, this needs to come out. This is, yikes. <laughs> there we go. And that is all. packaging. The lid's already off. Now this front cardboard part I might keep. Because that's still nice. The back is disgusting. But I can use this. I'm like a little pack rat. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh yeah. This, this plastic needs to be thrown away. It's not the worst I've seen. At least it's not yellowed, but, oh, is that dust? That looks like dust. This has definitely been opened before. I'm gonna go clean this off and I'll be right back. Okay, all that's really crusty is this little entry point, but the rest of it, I got it pretty clean. And this is rubber and that gets really gross really quick for some reason. At least from my collecting experience. Let's put this little guy together. It should be this way. Oh, Lord have mercy. Okay. Oh, great heavens. Does that... Oh, I got it. I got it! Oh my god! I have a baton now, whoa, crazy, whoa. <laughs> when I was in uh, middle school and in high school, I used to like do the pencil twirl thing. If this was smaller, I could do it. Oh, there's still dirt I missed. Here she is, very cute. I'm glad the white isn't faded. Usually with toys like this, the white is like really crusty, gross color, if you know what I mean. Same with pink plastic, which really gets on my nerves because I love pink, if that isn't obvious. <laughs> but yeah, there's really good attention to detail for the price. And while there isn't any battery function or anything like that, this is still a really cool display piece that has a lot of great detail. Those are my Naja items. I hope you enjoyed this part of the video. I hope you're enjoying the whole video. This is probably going to be towards the end. But yeah, I don't know where I'm putting this. The next segment. I need to give credit to the amazing crew of Naja. There is some great talent here. Series director Takuya Igarashi has worked on some notable series like Ojimajo Doremi, Soul Eater, Sailor Moon, or on High School Host Club, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Bungo Stray Dogs, and Skate the Infinity, just to name a few. Honestly, I encourage you to look through the staff of Naja. It would take me forever to go through how talented everyone is, and this video is long enough. However, despite the quality of Ashito no Naja, it didn't perform well. Granted, I don't think it's fair to compare a 50 episode long love letter to classic shoujo to big magical girl franchises, but it doesn't seem like the show sold as many toys as Doremi or Precure. And unfortunately, that's a huge source of revenue for anime targeted at kids. 
I think that's partially because the show doesn't seem like it had toys in mind when telling its story. There's a brooch with a ring inside. There's the dance items. Dolls. Plushies. Figures. Stationery. The music box. Costumes. The umbrella. I am so mad I don't have that in my collection. But in comparison, Precure and Doremi have a lot more to work with in that department. As for TV ratings, I could see why Nadja wouldn't be as popular as some of Toei's other series. Doremi, Precure, Sailor Moon, and others for the same demographic all have various amounts of filler, making it easier for younger viewers to jump in when they can. This isn't ideal, but there are times when you simply can't be home that day. Nadja, however, has no filler. The story is extremely tight, so if you missed an episode back when it was airing, and there wasn't a rerun, you'd be kinda confused. Between toys and an inability to jump in whenever, during a time where streaming wasn't the norm, Nadja was destined to be less profitable. Also, the extremely popular Mermaid Melody was airing during the same year, so I wouldn't be surprised if some toy sales went there instead. And I can't say I wouldn't have done the same. The Mermaid Melody toys are so pretty! I think Nadja would have performed better during the rise of streaming. Could you imagine the success it could have had on Crunchyroll? Or Netflix? Funnily enough, William Winkler tried to produce an English dub for the series. This attempt resulted in two movie-length clip shows from the original series. Dear Mother, After I left the Applefield Orphanage at 13, I joined the Dandelion Troupe, a wonderful group of traveling performers. My very first dance performance was in London. I admit I was nervous, but the show was marvelous. Later, I attended my very first ball. I wore your dress that night and danced with the handsome, starry-eyed knight. It was a romantic evening I'll never forget. I think Nadja is a perfect historical shoujo. This is one of my all-time favorite shows, and I highly encourage you to check it out. It's not available anywhere legally as of me making this video, but I know you know how to sail the seas. I promise it'll be worth the searching inconvenience if you're a fan of drama, romance, and classic shoujo. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed, you should subscribe and check out my other videos. I'm also very active on TikTok and Instagram, where I post lots of cute content. So follow me there too! Lastly, Troop on Hopelets, stay adorkable! Bye!